Hi, everybody. It's still November 30, 2017. I am passing along to you what was passed along to me by a subscriber who I want to thank. I pass these studies along to you so that you can have on hand, print them out or bookmark them when you are facing somebody who is rolling their eyes and calling you crazy, especially those parents with children those parents who give their children cell phones and iPads when they're three years old or two years old, thinking that, wow, all of these videos are so educational. And, you know, children's brains are still developing and children's skulls are still developing. They are much thinner than a uh, already developed adult skull. So these frequencies penetrate their skulls much easier and get inside their brains, damaging their brains. But these microwave electromagnetic frequencies affect every cell in their body. I see these children. They have them in their super, uh, these supermarket carts. And the children are sitting in these carts with, the, with their um, iPads or whatever. And they're literally like six inches away from their eyes. And I think to myself, oh my God. How can this be? They are damaging their children. So, for those who do not believe that these frequencies are dangerous, hand them these studies and then walk away. You've done your best. My God. If they're not even going to read them, if they're not even going to uh, entertain the evidence, then you have a very damaged human being in front of you and just walk away from them. Because you keep trying to get through to these people. You know, I, I have given myself, you know, like, all right, three, three strikes and you're out. I'll try, you know, every which way, maybe three times. And then I'm just done. I know that I've done my best. I have to let go of the results. So this study, significant decrease of clinical symptoms after mobile phone base station removed, an intervention study. This research was undertaken to investigate the validity of concerns about whether chronic exposure to radio frequency electromagnetic fields emitted from mobile phone base station antennas. Now, let me clarify that. Those cell phone towers are the phone base station. So if you have a cell tower near your home, you're, you are getting those dangerous frequencies. Smart meters, Wi-Fi, it doesn't have to be just a phone base station. So this study was aimed to identify possible adverse health effects among the residents of a condominium on which a mobile phone base station with sets of antennas operating at two different frequencies had been mounted above on the roof of the condominium. And what they did find was when they removed the panels, when they removed these antennas, wow, people in the condominium began to feel better and their symptoms began to improve. Another study, Dr. Neil Cherry, evidence that electromagnetic radiation is genotoxic. What's genotoxic? Genotoxicity. In genetics, genotoxicity de describes the property of chemical agents that damages the genetic information within a cell causing mutations which may lead to cancer. Electromagnetic microwave frequencies are genotoxic. They cause cell mutation which may lead to cancer. It is one of the reasons why we see an exponential increase in cancer rates. So Dr. Cherry was invited in June 2000 by a group of European Parliament MPs to present evidence at a European Parliament conference if there was any evidence that electromagnetic radiation was a genotoxic um, or if there was any 
epidemiological evidence showing what exposure level levels could be safe. Dr. Cherry was surprised to find many studies showing that electromagnetic radiation is genotoxic, including several isothermal studies and several with dose-response relationships. He also found many epidemiological studies showing dose-response relationships for cancer, cardiac, reproductive, and neurological effects, showing a safe level of zero exposure. Zero. And our levels here in the United States for this microwave electromagnetic radiation that is pouring in from so many different sources. The Wi-Fi, the smart meters, your cell phones, your cell towers, your Gwen towers, the Wi-Fi in schools. Zero exposure. We are so unbelievably um, held prison now in a dangerous environment no matter where we go. Wi-Fi all over the place. So this is a very good study to print out, have it on hand when you are talking to people about the biological effects to the brain, to the heart, to cells. You know, listen to this. The paper attempts to follow basic classical scientific principles to counter the dismissive and biased approach of industry and many government and international authorities, including the World Health Organization and ICNIRP. The principles found to be important are that biology reveals that brains, hearts, and cells use electromagnetic signals, charged ions, voltage-gated ion channels, ion-regulated gap junctions, all of which can be interfered with by external electromagnetic fields in subtle but vital ways in relation to health. Now, I don't think a lot of people realize that they are electromagnetic beings. So when we have these external electromagnetic frequencies that do penetrate our, the, the skin, our skulls, they are interfering with our natural electromagnetic processes within the body. And that interference does cause an awful lot of biological problems. So, the links are below. Thank you for sending along these studies because they really are. You know, and I'll end with this. We have industry, the telecommunications industry, along with an awful lot of government officials who claim that there are no studies showing the that these microwave electromagnetic frequencies cause any danger to health. And I'm going to pause you for a second because there are countless studies. And now I have to prove what I just said. All right, here is the Environmental Health Trust, 27 pages, health risks to children with wireless radiation. And all of the hyperlinks are studies that have already been conducted. It is so frightening to hear these lies come out of these government officials and these, um, these very sick, psychopathic telecommunication workers talking about how there's been no studies, no studies, no studies. All of the uh, blue is hyperlinks to studies. So, no, there have been no studies that show that microwave electromagnetic radiation is dangerous, cause any kind of health risk or threatens health. 
they're lying through their teeth. The Bioinitiative Report uh, is a report that everybody needs to bookmark. Uh, rationale for biologically based public exposure standards for electromagnetic fields. And you can click on the download summaries of all of the research, or you can go to the research summaries page. And just these are 2014, only 2014 and 2012. And look at the summaries. Okay, this is 606 pages long. Yeah, no studies conducted that show any kind of uh, biological adverse effect. And these are all of the studies. But they're not the recent studies. 606 pages long. You go to uh, an update and you have 106 papers, 106 more papers that show biological effects from electromagnetic microwave frequencies. Yes, this is, uh, we are living in a very dangerous environment now. Does it not upset you? Well, maybe if you are still asymptomatic, it doesn't upset you. But you should be really upset that children are subjected to this 24-7 because many go home from their Wi-Fi schools into their Wi-Fi homes and so many of them are just staring at cell phones. I will also link below to uh, quotes from experts. An awful lot of quotes from experts. Expressions of concern from scientists, physicians, health policy experts, and others on this environment that we are now living in. The past president of the American Academy of Environmental Medicine who is now the founder and director of the Environmental Health Center in Dallas. Sensitivity to electromagnetic radiation is the emerging health problem of the 21st century. It is imperative health practitioners, government schools, parents learn more about it. The human health stakes are significant. Martin Blank, Associate Professor, Department of Physiology and Cellular Biophysics at Columbia, Columbia University, Cells in the body react to EMFs as potentially harmful, just like to other environmental toxins, including heavy metals and toxic chemicals. The, DN, the DNA in living cells recognizes electromagnetic fields at very low levels of exposure and produces a biochemical stress response, mutation of the cells. The scientific evidence tells us that our safety standards are inadequate and that we must protect ourselves from exposure to EMF due to power lines, cell phones, and the like, or risk the known consequences. The science is very strong, and we should sit up and pay attention. Oli Johnson, PhD, Associate Professor of the Experimental Dermatology Unit at the Department of Neuroscience at Karolinska, Karolinska um, Institute, I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, but in Stockholm, Sweden, if uh, or it is evident that various biological alterations, including immune system modulation, are present in electro-hypersensitive persons. There must be an end to the pervasive nonchalance, indifference, and lack of heartfelt respect for the plight of these persons. It is clear something serious has happened and is happening. Every aspect of electro-hypersensitive people's lives, including the ability to work productively in society, have healthy relations, and find safe, permanent housing is at stake. The basics of life are becoming increasingly inaccessible to a growing percentage of the world's population because these frequencies affect everyone everyone, all life, not just the two-leggeds, but the four-leggeds, the trees, the plants, all life, the insects, the bees. Why do we see such a decline in insects and bees? Because of these microwave frequencies.
that we are now saturated in. But when he says the growing number of people, it will only continue to grow because more and more people are crossing that line from asymptomatic to symptomatic. And how many people are symptomatic and they do not attribute their symptoms to the Wi-Fi that they're living in? I strongly advise all governments to take the issue of electromagnetic health hazards seriously and to take action while there is still time. There is too great a risk that the ever-increasing RF-based communications technologies represent a real danger to humans, especially because of their exponential, ongoing, and unchecked growth. And think about the 5G rollout. Very dangerous millimeter waves. Governments should act decisively to protect public health by changing the exposure standards to be biologically based, communicating the results of the independent science on this topic and aggressively researching links with a multitude of associated medical conditions. David Carpenter, MD, University of Albany. Magna Havis, Havas, I don't know. I'm so bad at pronouncing names. But there's a long list, a long list of experts, scientists, physicians who have been trying to get the word out how dangerous this environment is that we are living in. But I do want to say to every adult who kind of turns a deaf ear, blind eye, to all of the evidence because you may be feeling okay please think about the children please think about the children Wi-Fi it is known to cause infertility in children in, in, in girls that are glued to their cell phones and stuck in schools with those Wi-Fi routers in every classroom. Wow. Well, I hope you get this information out. I hope you bookmark this information so that you have it right at your fingertips when somebody calls you a crazy conspiracy theorist.